Channel width and transmit power is all about how we can get to our clients that are connecting to our wireless access points in the most efficient way possible. So if I click on inventory and just expand one of my access points, I'm going to go to where it says radios. And under radios, we have some options that you may not see if you don't check this little box that says use specific configurations for this radio. So I'll go ahead and check that box. And when I do, I'm given the option for the channel width. So the channel width shows this nice graphic where it shows you how many channels are available at the 20 megahertz broadcast. And that is the default configuration for 2.4 gigahertz. Now, if I'd like to double that so I can get even more channel width, meaning more clients can connect to it, you can see that I'm only going to have two different channels with which they can connect. And that's usually just fine the way it is. But if you have a lot of other wireless access points in the area that are parts of different organizations and they cross over into your channel width, then that may be a problem because you have less channels available. So in that case, you may want to go with the 20 megahertz, which gives you the three channels. Now, there are a lot more channels at 2.4 gigahertz. There's 1 through 11. However, they all cross over into each other with the exception of these three channels, which is why these are the most common channels picked by your wireless access point. Then we have the option for transmit power. So why would we want to do transmit power anything less than max? Well, that may be because we may have a wireless access point that's very close to another access point, or maybe that's really close to a parking lot. And we may want to not have full power because it may cause some crosstalk from one location to another. So if it's really close to another wireless access point, then you may have crosstalk with that access point, and they may become less efficient because of that. If it's very close to a parking lot, then by lowering the amount of transmit power, what it does is it acts almost like a wireless dampener. A Wi-Fi dampener is going to keep signals from going out further than you want them to. So that way people in the parking lot can't sit there and try to hack into your network. Let's take a look at the same options, but with the 5 gigahertz radio. Now, with 5 gigahertz, you have a lot more channels. As you can see, this one's showing up to 149 channels than you do with the 2.4 gigahertz. And that's because this is a newer technology, and they thought about more channels and less crosstalk when they invented it. So by default, we can see the channel width is going from 20 to 80 megahertz and giving all these different channel selections as well as transmit power. But let's see what it's like if we just do the 20, 40 megahertz. Take a look at all the different channels that you can use. And once again, the difference is going to be between whether or not you have a lot of other wireless access points that belong to different organizations that may be close by. And once you've had these set the way you'd like, you can choose which network assignment they're going to be assigned to, whether internal or guest, and then you can click the Save button.